Hello, my name is Melissa Hike, and I am here in the New Hanover County Cooperative Extension Office with 4-H agents Scott and Rufty, and also Miss Claire who works here in the office. We're going to do a little field trip to begin with our embryology project today, and we're going to start by uh, allowing Miss Claire to turn a couple of eggs so you can see inside the incubator. And you'll notice that she just turns them very gently. And you will also notice that we have lots of different colored eggs this time. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Also inside the incubator, we have two very important things, and that is water and heat. And that's very important to developing chicks inside the eggs. Good job, Miss Claire. And also, um, Mr. Scott, if you will show the demonstration model that we use to show what the chicks look like at different stages. You'll see we've got six days to go on these eggs. And I suspect we'll be turning one of those around. So you can see what that baby chick looks like at this point in the incubation process. Thank you, Ms. Claire. Good job. All right, we're gonna go back into our multi-purpose room and we're going to look at some eggs on the inside and the outside and we're gonna learn about chickens. talk today about a lot of different things um, pertaining to embryology and embryology is a program that we do here in the school system in New Hanover County and is a partnership with three different agencies. We um, of course 4-H which I've mentioned before. We also have uh, New Hanover County Farm Bureau provides a lot of resources for us and we also have the county schools and this may be a project that you have in your schools but it's not a project that has to be conducted in schools. If you have access to an incubator, then this is something you could do in your home uh, as a little science experiment. Uh, today I'd like to mention to you some of the sources before we get started. There's lots of information on the internet uh, pertaining to incubation, growing chickens, whether it's in the classroom or, or in um, your own home. Our Farm Bureau provides books for the classrooms and we try to update those books and provide a different book every couple of years so that the teachers have a supply of different books that they can use in the classroom to supplement the uh, embryology program and help the students learn more about how the process works. Um, some other things that, uh, that we use for this program are Chick Quest, uh, which is a teacher's guide. 4-H has some great um, project books, in Experiments in Poultry Science, um, Hatching Classroom Projects, we also have excellent adventures, lots of good information in there and charts that you can look at, and the incredible egg. And I would mention here that the um, American Egg Board is a very good source for uh, on-farm tours and virtual tours that you can look at, um, as well as some other resources that you can use in learning more about how chickens develop and hatch. So today, we're gonna to begin with talking about what we mentioned earlier in the beginning of the program, and that was about the heat and the water in the incubator. Those two things are important because if you were to put the eggs in an incubator and not put moisture in there, the chicken would probably fry, or the baby chick would fry. Uh, if you were to not add heat, then the chick could get too cold and not develop. So those two things are really important. And not only are they important, but we want to talk today about how those two things mix together and make humidity, which goes into the egg through various ways. So uh, we're going to begin with that today and talking about um, moving from the incubator to the eggs. And today I have some eggs here in front of me, and these are eggs that were purchased at the grocery store. 
eggs like your mom or your grandma would buy to make a cake or to make an omelet. You'll notice there are white eggs and there are brown eggs. There are large eggs, smaller eggs. There are light brown eggs and dark brown eggs. Um, wouldn't you pay particular attention to this little freckle that's on this egg? And um, these, uh, the eggs that we use in embryology for our program come from the poultry farm at NC State University. Dr. Fosnott there uh, has talked to us about eggs and has informed us that these eggs with these markings are a hen signature. And if, you're, if a hen is in a hen house, and there are lots of chickens there. Chickens have been known to take other chickens' eggs because they want to get as many eggs as they can to, to uh, sit on and hatch. So sometimes they have taken eggs from other hens. These markings are the same marking that a hen lays every time. So if she sees that egg with a freckle under another hen, she knows exactly where that uh, egg came from and she can get that egg back in her nest. So if you see markings on an egg, you'll, you should know that those markings will be on every egg that that hen lays. That's, that's a pretty interesting thing. Um, as far as nutritional value, white eggs and brown eggs have the same nutritional value. Um, it's a matter of personal choice. Now, white eggs are usually less expensive than brown eggs. And the reason that is the case is because most of the time, brown chickens are larger than white chickens. And so a farmer has to feed brown chickens a lot more food. So when they go to sell those eggs to the grocery store, they're gonna charge more to try to recoup their feed money. So that's one reason that they're um, more expensive when you go to the grocery store. Now, if you're looking at this white egg, Mr. Scott, if you can show that, these are two different um, white chicken eggs. One is smaller. It's a 1940 Leghorn egg, and one of the eggs that we're actually hatching in our project this time, and uh, also this egg beside it, which is a regular um, uh, Leghorn egg. So they are, they do come in different sizes and um, uh, different colors, but they're all the same on the inside. Now your eggs in an incubator um, or under a hen are gonna take 21 days to hatch, and the hen will actually turn those eggs 50 times. Now, if you have an incubator, you're gonna turn your eggs two to three times a day. And the reason we do that is because we want our eggs to stay warm and moist on all sides. If you don't do that and you just put the eggs in there and left them, then your chicks might stick to the shell and, and never be born or either born with some issues. So you wanna make sure you turn those eggs like Miss Claire did earlier, gently, two to three times a day. But now the mother hen does it 50 times a day. So if you're in school, you're gonna to have to miss a lot of things like recess and lunch if you had to turn those eggs as much as a mother hen. But that's her only job. So fortunately, two to three times a day works when we're growing, uh, doing our embryology project in the incubator. Now, let's talk a little bit about hen uh, temperatures and how legs, eggs are laid. If you'll look at my chart here, um, you'll notice that uh, students' body temperature is around 98.6. Now, if you go over to the hen's body temperature, it's 107, sometimes even a little bit more than that. Why is a chicken so hot? Well, we live, uh, it's wintertime right now, and we live in, um, inside. If we go outside and it's snowing or it's cold or raining, we can put on a coat. A chicken lives outside, so they don't have a coat. They have feathers, and those feathers keep them super warm. So the hen uses her body heat to duplicate the heat that we have in the incubator that makes the chickens grow inside the eggs. So that's the reason that chickens are so warm is because of their feathers. Now, another note about chicken feathers is that lots of times we can tell what color egg we're going to get by the color of the chicken's feathers. So you'll see a white chicken here, and this chicken, of course, with white feathers is gonna lay a white egg. Now, depending on the breed, it can be a big egg or it might be a smaller egg, but they're going to lay a white egg most times. This is a Buff Orpington um, chicken, and it's a brown chicken, so 
it's probably going to lay a brown egg and more than likely it would be a lighter color egg because lots of times the color of the egg coordinates with the color of the chicken. So this chicken is going to lay a brown egg. Now, what is a better way to tell what color an egg is going to be? If you bought a, a chicken and it was all different colors and you didn't know what color your eggs were going to be, you could look at your chicken's ears. And that is a chicken ear right there. Bet you didn't know chickens had ears. That is brown. So that chicken is going to lay a brown egg. On the other hand, this chicken has a white ear. So that chicken is going to lay a white egg. Now there are exceptions to those rules always. And one of those exceptions is an Americana chicken, which a lot of people have in their backyards now. They're commonly known as Easter egger chickens. And this chicken looks a little blue, but it's got brown feathers and probably different ones are, are variations of this. But this chicken, we would think, might lay a brown egg, wouldn't we? But if we look, the Easter egger chicken lays a lot of different color eggs. They can be green or blue or pink or an olive color, all different colors. And we call them an Easter egger chicken because those eggs are ready for Easter. We don't even have to dye them. So that is an exception to the uh, color feathers. Now, when a chicken lays an egg in the nest, the chicken is 107 degrees. Remember we talked about that? And the nest is not going to be 107 degrees because it really doesn't get that hot here. So when the egg gets in the nest, it's going to cool down. And a special process happens where the insides of the hard egg shrink up. And that creates um, an air cell, which is the splitting of two membranes. And the two membranes inside the shell will separate and make an air cell. Now, this is the air cell in the beginning, around the seventh day. It gets larger on the 14th day, it has gotten to this size, and then by the 18th day, which is when you want to stop turning your eggs in the incubator, it's pretty big. So that air cell has a very special purpose. That is where the baby chick breathes. When the baby chick has the capability of breathing, then it will um, get its oxygen from that air cell and it will also put in carbon dioxide that will seep out through the egg and then be replaced with fresh oxygen that the chick can breathe. So, so air cell is very, very important in the egg. Now, um, I have actually an, a nice example of an air cell that you can see in an egg that we cracked this morning. And Mr. Scott, if you will help me get that so they can see that. This is where the membranes have separated and made an air cell out of those two membranes inside the eggshell. Did you see that? Um, that's always in the big end of the egg. And remember, it gets larger the more the chick develops. And so you can see the membrane itself, this also came from this egg. And there's the membrane. It's that papery thin, there's actually two membranes that are inside the egg shell, right inside. And that papery uh, membrane is something we're gonna take a little closer look at uh, in just a few minutes. But that is there, and if most of us have peeled a boiled egg, and you notice when you do that, sometimes that papery membrane sticks to the egg and it takes chunks of the egg out. Sometimes it'll slide right off. But that papery material is actually the membrane inside the egg shell. Um, of the egg. All right, we're going to take a look at some different uh, breeds. These are uh, um, breeds that we have in our incubators here in New Hanover County, but there are many, many different breeds of chickens. They're just like dogs or cats or any other animal. There's lots of different ones, but I want you to see what the adult looks like versus the, um, the chicks when they hatch in the, in, either in the incubator or um, under the hen. And this is a Rhode Island Red, a very famous breed of chicken. And you can see here, the rooster's tail is nice and uh, 
fluffy and it has a large comb. It's bigger than the hen, but this is just to show you the difference between a hen and a rooster, and the rooster is, is much more showy than the hen is. But this is a Rhode Island red hen and rooster, and their chicks, when they hatch, are gonna look like this. They're gonna be kind of a bronze color, and um, aren't they cute? So that gives you some color in your incubator, and those chicks will eventually grow up and get darker and be the dark color that their parents are. Another um, chicken that we have in our incubator this time is called a leghorn chicken. And this chicken, um, I always think of a leghorn chicken because it has such long legs. It's more of a tall chicken. But this um, chicken has and it's also a rooster, as you can tell by its tail and its large comb. These are leghorn chicks. So these are what their chicks look like when they hatch. Now, when a chick hatches um, in the incubator or under the hen, they're not born nice and fluffy. They have to dry out because they've been inside that egg. So um, after a, a period of time, a couple of hours or so, under a heat lamp, they will get nice and fluffy and you'll have pretty chicks no matter what color they are. And then another um, chicken that we have in our incubators here are the barred rock chicken, which uh, we like to refer to as a zebra chicken. And this is a hen, and her baby chicks are gonna look like this. So eventually the, the yellow will go away and you'll, it will be replaced by white and they'll have the markings that are, um, that look like the adult hen here. Now, I wanted to show you a rooster because this is a very important point to make. Um, roosters, this rooster is a phoenix rooster and it's a very bright color. Um, all these beautiful colors, large comb, fluffy feathers, plumes. Um, this chicken is bright and colorful because it wants to be seen. Male species are usually, and birds, are usually very colorful and showy so they can attract a mate. On the other hand, if you think of uh, the female bird, which is usually a more muted color, not nearly as bright, they're sitting on eggs and they don't want to be seen by predators, so they're not gonna be as colorful. Think about our, uh, our North Carolina bird and the cardinal. Cardinal is a beautiful red color, the male, and the female is kind of a mousy, browny gray, so she sits on the eggs and doesn't attract predators that would um, hinder her incubation, and this chick, this uh, rooster is looking for a mate. So that's very imp important to, to note when you see birds in the wild that the male is usually the brighter um, color. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about different parts of the inside of the egg and we're gonna begin with the, um, the egg covering, which is the shell. And um, if you really want to see the holes that are in this eggshell, you can dye it with some food coloring. That's a, a fun thing to do at home. And, um, and you can see the holes that are in the eggshell easier. These are called pores. And they're easier, I think, to see in the brown eggs than they are in the white. And lots of times when we're doing classroom work, we dye the white eggs so that you can see them better. Now these pores are going to allow that moisture from the incubator to go through that shell. Because what's the point in having humidity in your incubator if it can't get inside the egg to the baby chick to help it develop? So those pores, there are 7,000 pores in an eggshell this size. Lots and lots of pores. Pores that are like the pores of our skin that allow our skin to breathe, these pores allow the egg to breathe and the baby chick to breathe. So those pores are the first part that we wanna talk about. If you dye an egg and boil it, uh, or, or dye a boiled egg, and then you peel the shell from the egg, you will notice that the egg, parts of the egg are colored the same color as the dye. That is because that water with the dye in it goes through those holes, those pores, and gets inside the egg. So that's a good way to determine that this egg shell allows moisture to go through there. Now, the best way, I think, we've looked at the membrane, but I think the best way to see what the membrane is like is by doing a little science experiment with a naked egg. And the naked egg is an egg that has been placed in white vinegar. 
Vinegar is an acid, so my shell is gone because the vinegar dissolved the shell. And what we're left with is the membrane holding this egg together. Now, the first thing that I noticed about this is that it smells a lot like vinegar, even though I've had it in water the last couple of days. That is because in the process of um, dissolving the shell, the membranes allowed moisture to go through there. So that vinegar went through the membranes. Now, the egg I started with was the same egg. And you notice that the uh, naked egg is considerably larger. Well, there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that it soaked up all that vinegar. So that made the egg larger. And if you were to drop this egg and it were to burst, you have a lot of vinegar in there. The other uh, reason that the egg is larger is because the shell is no longer there to hold it, to constrict it. So the um, egg itself membrane is allowed to expand. So this is a nice rubbery, it's pretty tough, but also we know that even though it's tough, it lets moisture and uh, heat get through the membrane because the baby chick is developing on the inside of a fertilized egg. Mm -hmm. So that would be a fun thing to do for a science experiment or a fun thing to do at home to watch that dissolve. It takes them a couple of days, um, maybe three days at the most, for that eggshell to dissolve. Now, we've talked about, um, um, as far as our egg parts, we have talked about our shell, which has 7,000 pores. We have talked about membranes, two membranes inside the eggshell. We've talked about the air cell or the air sac which is where oxygen flows in and carbon dioxide flows out for the baby chick. And now we're gonna talk about the other parts, which is the albumin, and you'll see two layers of albumin here. And those, um, that albumin serves as a cushion and also lubricates the chick so that it doesn't stick to the side of the shell. So every part of the egg has a really important um, function in the embryology process. You will also see the chalaza or the chalaza, which is we call the seat belt of the egg. Now it's connected to the edges of the egg here, so it holds this egg yolk in place. But something happens when we crack the egg and it's no longer connected. So I want to show you what that looks like. And this is an egg that we um, actually cracked open this morning. And you, it's a very good example of the chalaza, and you can see that seat belt, which is no longer connect to the, connected to the egg. It's that ropey material. And these eggs that we have cracked today to show you, for the most part, are eggs that came from the grocery store. And if we were to take eggs from the grocery store and put them in an incubator, they're not fertilized, and so they would never hatch into a baby chick. So I want to show you the difference between what an egg looks like when it's fertilized and when it's not. Now, you will notice, first of all, that this egg yolk is larger. That's just a matter of the chicken um, and the type of chicken it is. And um, chickens lay different size eggs. Egg yolks are different sizes. It could be um, an effect from the age of the egg. It might get larger as it, or spread out more as it gets older. But this, uh, you'll see a germinal disc, which is a little dot, little white dot, right here. Is that where it is, Scott? It's hard. There it is. The little white dot. Now, that is an unfertilized egg. And when you crack an egg to make an omelet or scramble eggs or make a cake, you will see that germinal disc in every egg. Now, it could be if you crack it into something, it could be it's on the other side because there's only one in each egg yolk, but there is a germinal disc. That germinal disc is where a baby chick starts to develop if the egg is fertilized. So it's also called an embryo. Now we're looking at this egg and you can see the germinal disc is no longer a little white dot. It's more of a donut looking thing in the middle of the egg. And that is because the egg is fertilized we were able to obtain some fertilized eggs, some extra eggs from NC State University. And so this is the first time we've been able to show what a fertilized um, 
terminal disc looks like, but it's very different than the uh, white little white dot that you find in eggs that you get from the grocery store. Okay, just as a recap, we have talked about the egg shell with 7,000 pores. We've talked about the membranes that separate and develop into an air sac. We talked about the importance of the air sac in helping the chick breathe in fresh air and let that uh, carbon dioxide out. We talked about the albumin and how that albumin cushions the developing chick and also how it lubricates the chick. So when we turn it over, it moves around, it develops the same on all sides. We talked about the chalaza, which is the seat belt. We talked about the egg yolk, which also has a membrane around it to hold it together. And then this germinal disc, which is orange on here just for illustration purposes, but it's white when you crack an egg from the grocery store. So those are all the parts of the egg. Now, one thing that I do like to mention from a farming aspect is that chickens like to lay eggs when the days are really long and warm. So you're gonna, if you have chickens, they're going to lay more eggs in the spring and the summer and the fall than they will in the wintertime. In the wintertime, if you'll remember when you were out on vacation, um, it gets dark at like five o'clock. Chickens don't tend to lay as many eggs then. So if you visit a chicken farm, you will find in the wintertime that farmers try to duplicate those conditions of spring and summer, and they put lights and heat inside the hen house so that the hen will think it's a warmer day outside and they will continue to lay eggs. Now, how many eggs can a chicken lay in one day? One egg, that is the maximum. If you have a chicken, you might get seven eggs in a week, but that would be very rare. For the most part, they'll lay one egg a day, which is the maximum, maybe a, a two or three later on in the week, and you'll get three or four eggs a week from a chicken. But for the most part, um, always keep in mind that a chicken does not lay a bunch of eggs at one time. There's an extensive duct work inside a chicken and that's a, quite a process for an egg to be developed. And so that is not something that a chicken can do several times a day. So you will get one egg a day, maybe, but never more than one egg a day from a chicken. So those are the points that we like to make about embryology. We think it's such a fun project, uh, such a fun way to learn about um, life and nature. Um, when you are um, using an incubator to develop eggs or to, to hatch eggs, you always have to remember that mother nature is involved. Uh, a chicken might sit on 10 eggs and eight of them might hatch. Um, it's just a matter of conditions. It, there could be something uh, wrong inside the egg that it doesn't get fertilized or it doesn't um, develop properly. Same thing in the incubator. You may um, very seldom do you ever get every egg to hatch. You just have to do the best you can to be a mother hen to those eggs in the incubator, turn them, make sure the humidity is right, the temperature is right, and, um, and then just hope for the best. So um, I hope that you learned a lot about embryology today. I hope you'll be encouraged to um, look more into embryology, do some research, learn about careers that might be in embryology, or you might want to start your own backyard flock if you live out in the country. But um, we're happy to present to you today from New Hanover County. And again, I am Miss Melissa and I've got Mr. Scott, the 4-H agent with me. And we're just excited to bring you information today and hope you enjoyed our presentation.